the my disclosures. Um, right. So, as has has already been alluded to, of course, um, Eurodynamics is this complex interplay of um, the child and the and their family, the operator, and the machinery, the tests and the traces. Um, and of course, in order to get um, the answer to the clinical question that we're actually asking, all three of these have to come together seamlessly to um, create the, um, to give an answer. Um, and of course, there are uh, various places where things can go wrong. So uh, I just had a little look at a trace uh, at, a, at a study that I did recently. And um, just ringed a few things here for you all to have a look at, just to realize that um, things don't always go as smoothly as, um, uh, as you would hope. Firstly, errors. Um, errors are avoidable and uh, strictly speaking shouldn't happen, but of course we're human and they do occur. So if they do occur, you need to recognize them and correct them. Uh, in my defense uh, here, I started this study and um, actually didn't recognize that the PAB line wasn't working. I was actually very worried about a clot in this child's bladder uh, from a suprapubic line. So I was busy looking at the, um, at the video pictures before I started flushing and, and replaced the rectal catheter. You can see in blue places where there are artifacts. Artifacts um, are events that happen uh, largely unavoidable, but you need to recognize them and characterize them. And then, of course, there are ambiguities. And in, in this case here, uh, these rises in uh, PVES, PDET look like uh, detrusive overactivity. In fact, um, it was inhibited voiding. So you need to um, describe that and um, explain it so that it's not misinterpreted at a later date. Smooth changes in traces are generally physiological, whereas sudden changes and spikes are generally artifact or error. So just looking at some examples, um, here's another error. Uh, this is a case where uh, the rectal and the vesicle lines were inadvertently reversed, showing these um, the abnormal trace, and it took quite a while for the urodynamicist to recognize this. This is a common artifact here. You can see uh, this was actually in a neurogenic case, um, repetitive phasic um, contractions in the abdominal line, which aren't present in the vesicle line, representing rectal contractions. And when you look at these more closely, you see the negative uh, deflection in your uh, PDET line. This is very obvious in this case, but sometimes when you just get intermittent rectal contractions and your baseline pressures are slightly higher, you can misinterpret these as detrusor overactivity uh, in your detrusor line. Here you can see this very uh, spiky uh, presentation on your PVES line and your PDET line. And this is um, a pump vibration that occurs if you're filling very rapidly, it's uh, the filling line um, transmits to the measuring line and it disappears when you stop filling. You can prevent this um, with a, uh, a pump guard. Here are two very common artifacts, uh, catheter flush. So here you're going along in the um, PAB line. The subtraction isn't um, complete. So the urodynamicist has flushed uh, the rectal catheter on two occasions with a subtraction in the PDET line. That's fairly obvious. Um, and here all three lines have had sudden movement and basically the, the catheters have been knocked. Loss of catheters is also a fairly common uh, thing that happens. Here we've got a, a PAB line. We get a nice rectal contraction with a corresponding uh, negative uh, deflection in the PDET line, and then the uh, rectal catheters actually passed. And likewise, during voiding, here the uh, urethral line is passed during uh, voiding and you get this sudden drop in pressure. Uroflomitis are commonly bumped. So here we've got, um, 
Here we've got a nice uh, smooth Euroflow line together with a rise in PDET and rise in urine uh, volume flow. And uh, over here, we don't have uh, corresponding features of rise in PDET and no change in um, flow volume. So this is in fact an artifact. So just in terms of troubleshooting, uh, before you run your study, you need, like any surgeon, like any uh, pilot, to make sure that everything's set up correctly. I'm sure this has been covered by the other speakers. Uh, but check everything's co connected correctly, correctly set up, zeroed at the correct level, that your Euroflomit is attached to using the correct density on your machine because saline is lighter than contrast, and make sure that your infusion fluid's at body temperature. If it's too cold, it can precipitate a truce overactivity. Looking at your PVES line, if this is too low, this is classically due to air bubbles, um, but can also be due to incorrect positioning. We've all uh, placed catheters in vaginas and it can even be clever enough sometimes to put them into a large ureter. Uh, make sure that the catheter isn't um, kinked. When you put a urethral catheter into a child in a frog leg position and tape it along the leg and then the legs are closed, the catheter can often kink. The catheter can be blocked by gel or mucus. And the thing to do is to flush gently. Don't flush too harshly. If you flush most transducers above 300 centimeters of water, you can actually damage them. If you get a dead signal, they're non-responsive. The catheter may up be the the catheter hole may be up against the bladder wall, uh, and what you need to do then is actually fill the bladder a little bit, and then start uh, measuring. Sometimes you only have the luxury of a single lumen, for example, a suprapubic catheter, uh, or one of your cystific suprapubic catheters is blocked, um, and then you can actually use um, a single lumen study <clears throat> using a fill measure cycle on a three-way tap. So you uh, would fill 10, 20, 50 mils, depending on your um, bladder capacity, and then uh, switch your three-way tap to measuring. That needs careful annotation on your study. What about p -ab? If it's too high, firstly, again, check the position. Is this in a contracted anus? Is it in a wadge of feces? Um, have you just blown the balloon up too high and there isn't a good enough slit? And you need to uh, release the pressure. If it's too low, you can flush gently. The, the, the children where you can get uh, too low PAD are the neurogenic children who don't get good anal closure. And I've spent many a study standing there trying to uh, keep, the, keep the buttocks closed to get some good PAD. If your PDET is too high, you need to fundamentally check your PVES and PAD are correct in the first place. But it might be that your bladder is not empty and you have poor compliance. It might be that the child's in the middle of voiding, uh, particularly the little ones, or that there is sustained detrusive overactivity. And of course, you can't have a negative PDET in theory, so you need to correct all of that. Running the study, remember to press record. Some, some studies, uh, some machines actually need you to start the study and record. Um, and uh, if you don't, you lose the whole thing. Uh, make notes as you go along because, again, uh, computers can crash, electricity can stop, plugs can be pulled out of the wall, uh, and then you lose all your information. Um, if your pump is having difficulties, Check your clamp, your air inlet valve, your connections. Classically, the problem of giving the giving set being put in the wrong way around actually removes urine out of the patient as opposed to pumping fluid in. Check that the giving set is correct. Um, the other common error is that the infusion finishes and you start pumping in air and that compromises the measurement of your traces. Um, Sanjay has already mentioned the correct rate. Uh, if you're looking for DO, uh, make sure that you bring the child upright because you're more likely to see DO in these positions. And if you get loss of compliance, stop your filling and see if your PVS settles to check that you're not filling too quickly. With the pressure flow study, 
Uh, if you're bringing the patient from supine to standing, beware fainting, uh, particularly in the teenager who's very inhibited. Uh, we've seen that lack of privacy can result in inhibited voiding and heightened sensation. You might need to leave the room uh, to help the child to do this. Uh, don't move, knock, or touch the uroflomitid. Don't block the ure, ure, the emiatus with tape. And don't include uh, knocking artifacts in your report. Uh, good, thank you. I hope that's useful, and I'm happy to take any, any questions. <laughs>